So we have uh, for our next uh, presenter, we have uh, I'm, going go for, I'm going as far as saying Maria. Yes. <laughs> if you uh, excuse me, uh, from the uh, Prosecutor's uh, of University Porto. Yes. So, um, without any further ado, hopefully this will work this time. Thanks to the organization of this conference for this opportunity of being here. And sorry for reading because my English is not fluent enough. Uh, I'm Maria, the, uh, the second one from the Central Services of the University of Porto, and I am the coordinator of the Information Management Unit. This presentation concerns task forces and projects developed in the university, particularly related to digital archives and repositories and rights to access them. Oporto is the largest Portuguese university and has been regularly classified at the top ranks by a panel of international experts as part of the Portuguese Research Unit's evaluation. It offers a large range of courses covering all levels of higher education and all niche areas of knowledge. During the last years, the university gave particular attention to postgraduate teaching and researching. Um, in the scope of the organization, information is produced by the management bodies and all the units that carry on the different activities. The amount and diversity of information reflect the dimension and the complexity of the organization behind. Beyond these producers, there are thousands of people generating information in different types of media. For instance, results of research, such as theses and articles, <coughs> but also data that supported the research. The coexistence of born digital with analogical information reinforces the difficulties of managing all these universe in an integrated way. The University of Porto has a strong and transversal information system developed since 1996. It was conceived to facilitate the production, flow and access to current information, mainly such as academic and administrative contents. The system dialogues with other applications and platforms such as this space that supports the institutional repository. Daily, dozens of publications of the academic community are automatically transferred from the publications module to the open repository once they are full text and allowed to be in open access. Besides the scientific production of the academic community, the institutional repository has a component dedicated to special collections that is known by thematic repository. These two components of the repository of Oporto revealed to be not sufficient to gather, preserve, and assure the retrieval of a great part of the information produced in the scope of strategic and support activities. Digital Archive was born in the sequence of this necessity. It is here now that are deposited, managed, and disseminated whenever possible series of scanned documents. <laughs> Faculties and other units of the university self archiving this platform, digital objects, and corresponding metadata, technical, descriptive, and contextual. The management of the digital archive takes place centrally in spite of the distributed access, as it happens with all the institutional repository. The most recent project resulted in the conception of a prototype of repository for data curation. We interviewed researchers from several scientific domains and these contacts were essential to understand their needs, interests and priorities related to data. Interviews also demonstrated if they were willing to share data or not and to do it in, in open access or in a restricted way. This prototype was also developed in this space platform with some extra developments. All this, at this moment contains different kinds of data sets, some in open access, other need, other need permission to be accessed. In what concerns the scientific repository, authors are recognizing more and more the importance of publishing using this institutional resource. They recognize really that this green way is the best to reach international communities. Although we maintain the, the activities and actions that promote the open access, namely scanning theses and other publications and contacting the authors 
to obtain their authorization and this takes a lot of time, but it's needed. The same attitude applies to the thematic component that has a particular significance to the memory of the university. This component gathers some contents that require authentication, such as the pedagogical resources for students with special and specific needs. It is here that the university gathers and disseminates whenever it is possible the legacies of former students uh, and researchers. <coughs> Information collected, <coughs> preserved, and available in digital archive raises equivalent issues related to access rights. Portuguese legislation do does not help us and frequently information managers have to deal with some paradoxes that come from contradictions between the intention and needs of a transparent administration and rights of privacy from whom refers the data. So, before any technical treatment, it is needed uh, a hard and accurate analysis and we must be very well documented. Our contact with researchers revealed a great diversity of situations in what concerns access rights. In some cases, researchers are motivated to share data, but only in the context of international initiatives. The great majority of them, in fact, seemed very cautious with respect to privacy issues. Although we are prepared to face researchers' needs and expecting that this prototype and uh, these uh, data repository functionalities help us in attracting the attention of them. And at last, we expect to provide them and support the, their needs. Thank you for listening. To me. Thank you, Miriam. For a renewal of people presenting in the first language uh, puts me to shame, that's for certain. So, thank you very much indeed. Okay, does anyone have any questions they would like to ask Maria? Okay, we're, we're, we're roaring through this, and our session will be finished well in advance.